The dividend discount model is a model used to determine the intrinsic value of a stock by summing up the present value of all future expected dividends. There are many different ways that the dividend discount model can be tailored to meet the best forecast of the underlying company. For example, a growth stock that's underlying company retains most of its earnings to invest in projects may be worth a lot of money, but pays out little dividends, where a mature zero growth company may pay out all of its earnings in dividends, therefore making it easier to value using the dividend discount model. Here we're providing you with the dividend discount model formula. Notice the similarities that it has to the formula used to value a bond. Of course, unlike bonds, there is a large amount of uncertainty in forecasting the future dividends and sale price that one may receive from a stock. Also, the future dividends are discounted by the cost of equity, where bonds are discounted by the cost of debt. In the dividend discount model equation that we've provided, the V stands for the value, and the Ds stand for the dividend. N stands for the year the stock is sold, and P of N is the sale price of the stock in year N. Finally, K is the required return, or the discount rate. Here we have the actual by-the-book dividend discount model. You can see that it is different from the other equation as it does not have the capital gains for the sale of the stock. This doesn't mean that a dividend discount model ignores capital gains. The main point is that by using the dividend discount model, we are simply discounting all the future cash flows that we expect to receive from the stock. These future cash flows are the dividends and the sale price of the stock. The only reason why this equation does not show the sale price of the stock is because the future sale price itself is derived from the future dividends. Therefore, under the dividend discount model, the value of the stock today is ultimately derived by all the future dividends that the stock will pay out. When investors apply the dividend discount model, they would know the date that they plan on selling the stock and would solve for the expected value of the stock at that date, then discount that price to its present value. The Constant Growth Dividend Discount Model what if a company's dividend was expected to grow at a constant rate? Let's say that there was a company that just paid a dividend of $3 and its dividend was expected to grow at a rate of 5%. If this were the case, the dividend in one year would be $3.15 and the year two dividend would be $3.31 and then the year three dividend would be $3.47. We would have to keep solving for each year's dividend at the growth rate and then discount them by the discount rate. The constant growth dividend discount model can be simplified as shown here. We can apply the constant growth dividend discount model to preferred stock as well. Preferred stocks usually pay fixed dividends, so there is no dividend growth. Let's assume a preferred stock that pays a fixed dividend of $1.50 and the discount rate is 8%. Notice that since growth is zero, the constant growth dividend discount model becomes the equation to solve the present value of a perpetuity. Let's do an example. Suppose XYZ company just paid a dividend of $3. The dividend is expected to grow at a rate of 5% indefinitely. XYZ has a beta of 1.2. The return on the stock market is 12% and the risk-free rate is 4%. What would the intrinsic value of XYZ's stock be according to the dividend discount model? First, we would figure out the discount rate, which is the required rate of return, by using the capital asset pricing model, known as the CAPM. Then, we would plug the discount rate along with other given figures into the constant growth dividend discount model. The capital asset pricing model gives us a discount rate of 13.6%. We did this by plugging in our assumptions to the capital asset pricing model. Our risk-free rate of 4% and then we added that to the beta of 1.2 times the difference of the risk of the market and the risk-free rate. 
And then here, you can see that we plugged in our assumptions to the constant growth dividend discount model. So according to the constant growth dividend discount model, our stock is worth $36.63. When valuing a stock, you can mix the dividend discount model with the constant growth dividend discount model. For example, let's assume that XYZ is going to pay a fixed dividend of $3 for the next three years. And after the third year, XYZ's dividend is expected to grow by 5%. The required rate of return is still 13.6% and the risk-free rate is still 4%. How would we find the intrinsic value of XYZ stock today? We would just discount the dividends to find their present value. Then, because the dividends are going to grow at a steady rate, we would find the value of XYZ stock in year 3 using the constant growth dividend discount model. We would then discount the price of XYZ stock in year 3 to its present value and add it to the sum of the present value of the first three years dividends.